structure we'll look at um whoa we'll look at water solubility and with regards to intermolecular forces so what makes something water soluble versus not water soluble so if we take a couple of examples Take that molecule versus versus that molecule. <clears throat> so a general principle for solubility is that like dissolves like. So the <clears throat> more similar two molecules are, the more likely they are to be water soluble in each other. So if we take the molecule on the left, A, we call it A and B. So which molecule is more like water? Well, so what are the basic um, physical properties of water or, or um, chemical properties of water? So first of all, is water polar? Uh, does it have a dipole? All right, what type of intermolecular forces can it? Can it make? So water, of course, oxygen's partial negative, hydrogen's partial positive. So it's and <clears throat> that's partial positive. So it has a dipole. So it's a polar molecule. Um, it can make hydrogen bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen. <clears throat> so if we go back to molecules A and B, uh, for the molecule on A, hydrogen's partial positive, oxygen's partial negative. So it's polar, um, it, it can make hydrogen bonds, whereas molecule B, uh, no partial positive hydrogen, because all of the hydrogens are on carbon, um, basically no dipole. Uh, this molecule is very nonpolar, uh, whereas molecule A is very polar. And so molecule A is gonna be more water soluble than molecule B. <clears throat> so how would molecule A interact uh, with a water molecule. So that would be one thing you have to do in this chapter is be able to sketch what the intermolecular attractions look like. So again, since oxygen is partial negative, hydrogen is partial positive, and if we take a water molecule, so a water molecule can hydrogen bond to the oxygen of molecule A, and molecule A hydrogen can hydrogen bond to the oxygen of water. <clears throat> so in solution, basically those molecules would interact with each other like, like so. So this hydrogen, hydrogen bonds to oxygen's lone pair, and this OH hydrogen, hydrogen bonds to oxygen's lone pair. So it'd look like that in water. <clears throat> okay, yes, yeah, so molecule A is much, much more water soluble than molecule B. So if we take that molecule versus uh, that molecule. So we'll ask the same question. So let's ask two questions on um, which one. <coughs> which has a higher boiling point and which is more H2O soluble. <coughs> Uh, so molecule, let's call this G minus. Let's call this molecule A. Again, molecule B. Um, so <clears throat> molecule A is polar. Molecule B is some polarity as well because oxygen is partial negative. Two carbons are partial positive. So the molecule does have a dipole. So it has some polarity to it. And molecule A, oxygen's partial negative, hydrogen's partial positive, carbon's partial positive, so it has a dipole as well. So it's polar and can make H bonds uh, because it's got the partial positive hydrogen, 
Whereas for molecule B, no partial positive hydrogen. since all of the hydrogens are on carbon. So molecule B cannot make hydrogen bonds <clears throat> to itself. Uh, molecule A can. So molecule A, if we sketch those hydrogen bonds, to itself, Right, that would look like that, whereas molecule B would only have a dipole-dipole attraction. Um, so this is going to have a higher boiling point. Yeah, so this molecule's boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius. And this molecule is negative 24.8 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> so again, so these mo molecules have something in common. Uh, they're both C2H6O. So same molar mass. <clears throat> so that's not going to affect boiling point then. So the only thing affecting boiling point is the intermolecular attractions. And for water, or for this molecule on the uh, left, molecule A, right? Hydrogen bonding is, has a huge effect on boiling point. So that's the strongest intermolecular attraction, so that's going to have a higher boiling point. <clears throat> How about water solubility? Can the two molecules, so they're somewhat like water, they're both polar, they both have dipoles, but molecule A <clears throat> on the left is more like water than molecule B because molecule A has the OH. And so it can make hydrogen bonds to water. So it can make two hydrogen bonds with water. So can molecule B make hydrogen bonds to water? And the answer is yes, it can. So this does has no partial positive hydrogen, but H2O does. So H2O can provide the hydrogen for the hydrogen bond. And the oxygen of molecule B can accept a hydrogen bond. So it can only make so it can only make one hydrogen bond with water. <clears throat> so so molecule a then is much more is much more water soluble. Okay, so let's take uh, another example. <clears throat> So let's start changing the length of the carbon chain. So one carbon, two carbons, three carbon chain, right, four carbon chain. And let's take this four carbon chain as well. So both of these are both C4, H, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, both C4, H, 10, O. So they're structural isomers of each other. And then let's take a couple more molecules. So six carbons. Seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one more. Six carbons again. Okay, so which of these are, so which is the most water soluble, which is the least water soluble? <clears throat> so the one that's the least water soluble would be this one. So only 0 0.054 grams. 
dissolves in 100 grams of water. And if you have six carbon chains, so the problem with molecule, uh, this molecule is that this part of the molecule is nonpolar. So it is it is hydrophobic, meaning it does not like water. Uh, the other part of the molecule, the OH, of course, uh, this part of the molecule is hydrophilic. So it likes water, um, <clears throat> but in terms of water solubility, so around four to five carbon chain. So once you have about four or five carbons in the molecule, the water solubility drops off rapidly. Okay, so if we compare the seven carbon chain to the six carbon chain, since it's got one carbon less, it's gonna be more water soluble. So this molecule 0.6 grams dissolves in 100 grams of H2O. So it's 10 times more water soluble than the seven carbon chain. <clears throat> and if we compare the two four carbon chains, so this carbon, nine, nine grams, will dissolve in 100 grams of water. So what happens after you add 9.1 gram, well that, 0.1 gram beyond 9 then would not dissolve in water so at that point you would get two layers you would have a layer on top and a layer on bottom and which one's going to be on top which one's going to be on the bottom what's that going to depend on that would depend on the density the one that's more dense would be on the bottom and the one that's less dense would be on top <clears throat> okay so if we compare these two molecules though they're both four carbons um and this car four carbon chain so that's hydrophobic And whereas the four carbon chain here is more spherical. All right, so there, it's just a carbon chain that's branched versus unbranched. So which one? So if you want to minimize surface area, um, you would put something into a sphere. So the spherical, the spherical carbon chain is less hydrophobic than the one that's linear. So for water solubility, So as branching of the carbon chain increases, H2O solubility increases because hydrophobic surface area decreases. <clears throat> and so if you remember, that's opposite of boiling point. Right, as branching of the carbon chain increases, boiling point decreases uh, because there's less there's less surface area, so there's less van der Waals contacts. Okay, so. Um, so for the three, one carbon chain, two carbon chain, three carbon chain, these are all miscible with water. So what does that mean? Uh, that means the word miscible, so maybe that's a new word for you. That means that means it dissolves in all proportions. You can add as much of uh, these first three molecules as you want to water, and it will never form two layers. And this four carbon chain that's branched like this is also miscible with H2O. So again, as you increase branching of the carbon chain, water solubility goes up. In this case, it goes up to the point that it's totally soluble with water in all proportions. Okay, and then what about this last molecule? 
So with six carbons, uh, does that dissolve in water? Uh, yes, this molecule is very water soluble. Even though it's got six carbons, so why is it so soluble even though it's got six carbons? Because it's got two OHs. So it can make hydrogen bonds at both ends of the molecule with water molecules. So basically it's got one polar group. Per every three carbons and that's going to be enough to give it water solubility because water solubility doesn't go away to around four or five carbons um, so the more polar groups you have in the molecule the more water soluble it's going to be as well okay so that's it for water solubility